this seminar will commence with an auspicious marchand ceremony. For our international guest, marchand or the deviation ceremony is an offering of wine and oblation to the local deities to secure their blessings for the removal of obstacles and for the successful outcome of any endeavor. Honorable Chief Justice of Bhutan and President of Sarklo, the person of Tokyo, Honorable Secretary General of Sarklo, Mr. Himan Patra. Honorable members of the Executive Committee Sark Law, Honorable Justices, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. Access to justice is an important component closely associated with the fundamental guarantee that all persons are equal before the law and are entitled to equal and effective protection of the law as provided for under any stable democracy. And before I conclude, allow me to place on record a sincere acknowledgement of gratitude to the Honorable Secretary General of Sarklaw, Mr. Heman Batra, for his selfless dedication and persistence in promoting the cause of Sarklaw. I wish all the distinguished delegates a pleasant stay, pleasant and a comfortable stay in Bhutan. Kashtini. May I now call upon the Secretary General of Sarklaw Organization, Mr. Himad K. Batra, to address the gathering. Honorable Chief Justice of Bhutan, President Sakwa, Justice Son Toke, Honorable Justice Shrink Wangchu, Judge Supreme Court of Bhutan, Vice President of Sakwa, and the President of Sakwa Bhutan Chapter, Learned Judge Pelton Mangmo, who is Secretary General of Sakwa Bhutan Chapter, and, and she is also a member of the Executive Council of Sakwa. Our UNDP and UNAIDS partners are also here, represented by Nashita Sattar from UNDP and Priyana Harrison from UNAIDS. And then we have uh, a friend already made and great partner in the making, Dr. Rinchen Chopil, Director General of SAIWAK, uh, South Asian Initiative uh, against uh, giant exploitation. It's, it's a regional ethics body like South Law. Honorable Chief Justice was very keen to organize an annual conference of the SAT law, but unfortunately we couldn't hold it, we wanted to hold it in June. But as you all know that all annual conferences of SAT law coincide with the SAT Chief Justice's event. And unfortunately we were not able to get convenience uh, as to dates from all the Chief Justices of SAT Committee because these days we find the judges are much more busier than the government functionaries for obvious reasons. The government phase judiciary becomes busier. But nonetheless, we thought let's be less ambitious this time and organize a seminar of international dimension. This theme was conceptualized by the Honorable Chief Justice. We were traveling to South Korea about a month and a half back. And there also I would like to mention to all of you that that was an invitation extended only to, to the Honorable Chief Justice in his capacity as the Chief Justice of a country. That was a Congress of the Asian Constitutional Courts where 40 countries were represented and most of the representatives were Chief Justices of those countries. But Honorable Chief Justice took such an initiative that he contacted the organizers and he ensured that SAT law got an invitation as an observer and therefore I attended uh, that congress as an observer uh, from SAT law and, and I'm sure in time to come that participation of ours is, is, is going to bear some uh, fruits for sure. Now coming back to the uh, this main theme, the Honorable Chief Justice felt that justice, delivery of justice is important but it becomes meaningless if 
the access to justice mechanism is derailed or is not in place. The processes are not in place. So he said that let's have uh, the theme of securing access to justice for the enforcement of human rights. And in fact, coincidentally, I was reading a newspaper in the morning on the internet, a British newspaper, where the chief of the police of UK, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner, Sir John Stevens, he made a statement which has created a lot of controversy in the UK and in, in, I would say in the whole world for that matter, it's more of a build up. He said, justice is, is a joke in UK. And he said that the rise in crime in UK to a great extent is attributable to failure of criminal justice system in, in the United Kingdom. And, and he went to the extent of saying that judges, defense lawyers, and court administrators are playing uneven games of tactics. But friends, if you read in between the lines, he is giving compliment to the judiciary. Because people who are yielding power and institutions who yield power, if they criticize judiciary, it means judiciary is doing the right job. It's competent, it's efficient. And it is not getting bogged down under the pressure of the executive. And even in South Asian context, we see every day, owners are totally dependent on judiciary today in South Asia. Because the kind of treatment they are being meted out by executive, there is a systematic failure somewhere, there are some gaps in the executive, so for redressal of their grievances, they, they, they look upon judiciary. In fact, India, there is a joke going around that India has actually invented a missile called civil servant, which doesn't work and cannot be fired. And a judiciary is definitely coming down heavily on bureaucrats and, and, and even the government machinery. Winston Churchill, I'm reminded of, who said that greatest of things are simple in form and can be expressed in single words. For instance, liberty, freedom, prestige, honor, mercy, and justice. And I would add to what he said, I, I would say that these single expressions are really important and key and fundamental, but they cannot be guaranteed till the time justice is in place. So justice definitely leads all these single expressions. And justice cannot be classified as small and big or addressing small and big problems because where any issue pertains to treatment of human beings, pertains to treatment of people, then there is no small or big. Everything is big. I will now close my address by, by wishing all of you uh, good luck and I'm sure the, the seminar which is spread over a day and a half has uh, four sessions. You all will benefit a lot. You, you will contribute and you must contribute because we have had we have uh, group discussions after each session and you should participate and you will definitely gain from the uh, experience, views, uh, discussion, deliberations which will be extended by the experts from the region. And finally, uh, Aristotle he said that uh, man is the noblest of the animal. But if you were to disjoint man from law and justice, he would become the worst animal. So please keep that in mind while you are deliberating on these sessions. God bless all of you. God bless us. And God bless Sadhguru. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sadhguru. Now, may I now humbly request the Honorable Chief Justice of Bhutan and the President of South Law Organization to deliver the presidential address. Honorable Justices, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I am truly honored to be with you this afternoon at the opening of the seminar. Firstly, in the capacity of the President of South Law, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all the foreign delegates here. I am particularly happy that we are able to host this seminar on 
securing the access to justice in the enforcement of human rights. It is an important fundamental issue for humanity. Human rights violations affect the access to justice and reduce the possibility of people to live under the rule of law. But this morning I was reminded by Professor Ranveer Singh. He doesn't like the rule of law, but he likes the rule of justice. I think very good concept. Uh, promoting and protecting human rights and the freedom of people based on the rule of law is therefore very important for securing the right to life, ensuring the enjoyment of life with dignity, free from oppression, discrimination and violence. This seminar provides an opportunity to deliberate and share our experiences, to collectively understand and devise means how to incense access to fair, speedy and cost-effective justice. With a growth of roughly comparable judicial institutions across our region and in the world, and with the ever-increasing similarities in the fundamental problems we face, there is much to be learned from the judicial solutions adopted by each one of us in our different countries and adopted to suit the needs and circumstances existing in our countries. Access to justice is one of the key components of the principle of rule of law. Access to justice is vital in redressing the grievances of the victim. Through unhindered access, victims will be comforted and offenders will be made accountable. The law should be clear, intelligible and accessible. Without access to justice and basic principles of equal treatment and of all people before law, fairness and both constitutional and actual guarantee of basic human rights will remain a mirage and optical illusion. A rapidly changing society, the information age, technology and an overall increase in population in our part of the world challenges the judicial system to implement immediate and ongoing reforms. It is necessary that our legal system must address the key issues of unequal treatment and a high cost of access to justice system, slow and inconsistent judicial process and a poor customer relationship will public is not acceptable. The legal system of our region must provide for swift and a fair justice at a reasonable cost, ensuring easy access to justice at all times. In this context, the court must take advantage of major improvements in the use of technology and technology that can provide. In Bhutan, we are introducing e-litigation as one of the options. This seminar is particularly important in the sense that after SARPLA conference in Paro in 2005, we have amongst us the most of the executive committee members. It is particularly noteworthy that in this seminar we have included law students, aspiring young lawyers who will be the leaders of tomorrow. You are the future and the legacy of our nations and hopes of our people. Therefore, this seminar marks the beginning of convergence of intellectual giants and legal luminaries from our region, from the executive committee members. We are strengthening the SAPLO and spreading our wings to reflect our soaring spirit and the essence of our eternal identity. Dialogue is a beginning of understanding that leads to unparticipation and breaking of by barriers. Human beings have always be, had the ingenuity, courage and faith to succeed in the face of adversities. Hence, we must together become a part of a solution. This seminar is an effort of SARP law in partnership with Saiva and other bodies to jointly work towards securing access to justice for all. 
I would like to thank and congratulate Saiba, Secretary, particularly Dr. Renshin Shepherd, the Director General, for your untiring efforts. I am confident this seminar will come up with innovative solutions to assist us in our journey to provide unhindered access to justice for all. Your input, sir and madam, and a fruitful deliberation will certainly guide us in creating just and equitable society. You may face, you may face some criticisms in life. You may encounter difficulties. But since Secretary General effectively quoted Sir Wilson Churchill, one day the press, I think, came to him and said, Sir Churchill, you are under attack. What? He said, he roared. Sorry, my voice is not as good as his. He roared and said, what? You are criticizing me? Yes, you are criticizing me. He said, good. At least I have taken one right decision. You have taken right decision. Thank you, sir. Honorable Limpo Sinan Tokri, the Chief Justice of Bhutan and the President of South Law, Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court and the High Court, distinguished guests and participants, I would like to thank all the international delegates for traveling to Thimpu to attend the seminar. It's your passion and commitment to, co to the cause of humanity which has brought you here, and it is this passion and commitment which will make this seminar a success.